Thanks. Um, so my background is computers. Uh, we didn't have 3D printers when I was your age. I have a lot of questions for you though. Um, and what I do, we do high risk, low frequency training. So if we can do a shoulder dystocia in a birth situation, for example, using a mannequin, we can go into rural areas of Arkansas and train staff. You know, we can get through the entire nursing staff, physicians, in a day or two days of training so that something they may not see very often, but that it could be life-threatening to the patient. We could do that. We can repeat it. Um, you know, we use mannequins that are anywhere from twenty to about $70,000. Uh, we have a very good working relationship with our manufacturers, so I've been in most of the manufacturing facilities and seen how they put these together. Uh, over the past couple of years, 3D printing has become a big part of that. They actually 3D print their molds for all of the uh, parts that they use in the mannequins. Um, when I was at Children's Hospital, we actually were faced with setting up an ECMO program training with mannequins that cost $60,000. But in ECMO, you have to use a cannula that's full of liquid, which you don't really want to do with a $60,000 computer. So what, we, is, what is ECMO? I'm going to ECMO, stop you there. Sorry. Uh, and, yeah, I'm bad about that. So, uh, ECMO is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. It's basically a heart and lung bypass situation. Um, it, a lot of the simulations would involve problems with the pump that create, creates a high pressure situation, which for me means it's probably going to leak in my mannequin. And you don't want to fry a $60,000 mannequin for one training. So we took a really low tech mannequin. Um, piece of software to mix heart and lung sounds, an iPod, and created a very rudimentary low-tech mannequin. But we went from a three to $4,000 a day animal lab to being able to repeat this training over and over. Well, Linda got me intrigued with 3D printing about a year and a half ago, and um, just all the ideas that we're coming up with in the sim lab now that we can you know, create uh, Everything from surgery situations that you know they don't have uh, any high tech solution for right now, or that consumable parts would cost three or four hundred dollars every time we perform the event. That if we can design our own modules and have the 3D printer in the house, um, you know, with consumable costs falling, as I'm sure you'll address in a minute, um, this this really opens up a lot of possibilities for us in the medical training field. Um, we are working on a business plan right now to try to find the right match to get one of those at UAMS and we're working on some possible solutions for training problems that we have now that we're going to actually have the 3D systems people print for us and try to implement into our training. Sounds good.